Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 92. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. If anyone recognizes this song, you might recognize it if you watch the YouTube. It's pretty much my outro for all of the Forza Motorsport 3 shit. Ah, oh, when it comes to Motorsport 4, I'm gonna have to find a new outro. I'm gonna have to find a really good one because that's gonna be in like 200 plus videos. Ooh. Yeah, I really wish Dead Mouse had like creator licenses so that content creators could use his songs. To be fair, I haven't even researched it. It might be a thing, and I've just said that. Because I would love to use that Nero remix of XYZ. That fucking song slaps. The Nero remix of XYZ is like one of the best dance songs ever. I'm still waiting for Nero. Nero teased that they had a new album coming over a year ago now. I think it was August 2021. It's now November 2022. So it's been over a year. And apparently the album was pretty much nearly done. Based off of the screen... They basically sent a... Um, properties window. Off of an iMac. Of a folder. Um, it's pretty much the same as if it was on like Linux or whatnot. But it was on an iMac. They basically right clicked, showed properties, and showed the next album. Um, obviously no album art or anything. It just had, I believe it was 11 tracks or 13 tracks. Um, but it came to like 90 megabytes, which I can only have the assumption that that's almost finalized songs, to be honest. Because most songs, like three, four minute songs, in a fairly high quality, are about eight, nine megabytes. So yeah, I'm very concerned where this new Nero album is. It is going to be nearly ten years since they would have released their last one before we get a new album. And to be honest, like, I understand that artists nowadays are under this immense pressure to produce something that's better than their last. But to be honest, most people like an artist's music because it's theirs. Like, Bullet For My Valentine, they've had albums be better, worse than the last one. They've had songs that are better, they've had songs that are worse. You still fucking listen to all of them because they all slap. I think artists just need to stop worrying about, oh, am I going to make a great song this year? Just make the fucking song. Like, if the song doesn't go down well, people just don't listen to it. It has absolutely no effect on the songs that do go well. So rather than sitting there spending forever on a song getting rid of it and whatnot, just release the song, you know. And I mean, Nero have, like, every couple of months made a remix of someone else's song, which, again, confuses me, because how can you be making remixes whilst also not making your own music? Great. <laughs> like, I obviously understand they've got to release some songs, but, like, this is... A remix has come out. Like, they're making remixes while they should be making their own music at this point. Remixes is more for when you've just released an album and you want to mess around with someone else's. Not when you're supposed to be making your own music. It's a very uh, strange 
strange thing, the Nero. But I wouldn't be complaining if they made this damn songs. You know what I might do? People will very much like me for this in chat. Enjoy. This is a Nero playlist. I fancy listening to Nero today. Thank you very much. I think it's interesting how many different, like, styles of... Like, Nero can make different types of songs. And it still has their sort of main style twisted into them. I think it's kind of impressive. This song is an odd one, though, because it doesn't match their style as much. Not bad. New. Do 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 flip, do a barrel roll, yeah. <laughs> Got a stiff neck, it's really annoying. Right, we got two more laps of this race to go. And then we got two more races to go of this championship. And then we got another championship. Woohoo! Hey, Zeno, did you know that um, for some unknown reason... I can't remember why, but um, Planetary Go was actually removed 
from the start cutscene of Gran Turismo 5. I believe they did like a second edition of the game that didn't contain Planetary Go in the cutscene. And yeah, I've got no clue why it happened, but they did it, and it was a shame. I think it also came in like a patch later on, but like if you had the original disc, you could still run the original version of the game, which, again, this was in a time where games didn't need patches. You could still play that game, run it, and it would be perfectly fine. You had no problems with it. I, I will admit, I love the digital era, the fact that I can download a game, they can update it with additional content, but that's what updates should be. There should be a couple of minor bug fixes if they do find any, because that then perfects the game a little bit more, but it should just be content updates. Most of the time nowadays, developers are just making a half-assed game and then relying on updates to fix the games. That shouldn't be what an update is for. It should be for updating the version, making it updated, making it new. Hence the name update. Not to fix it. Because otherwise, they wouldn't call it updates, they call it fixes. I think that's what um, sites should start doing. Like Steam, Xbox, PlayStation. They should put like how many updates a game has to show how many times they update it and add new content and how many times they push fixes to the game to show how broken a game can be and whether you'll have problems with it or not because I can guarantee you as soon as a site like Steam starts pushing like updates and fixes and making developers have to choose whether it's a fix or an update A lot of developers will either update the game rather than just constantly pushing fixes or they're going to end up releasing games actually in a good condition to avoid having like numbers of fixes and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I think it would work. And obviously businesses, they're sort of less likely to abuse that system because you know they're businesses smaller developers might abuse it but smaller developers don't get the recognition they need anyway so I'll let them get get out of jail free card <laughs> for that one I think I think it will work though in helping consumers more than developers because then it means developers actually have to put work into the game to make sure it works and again, I think they should do what Need for Speed has done. I mean, they've announced that game two months before it releases. If they did that, they wouldn't have the pressure of the time crunch. They only had to announce the game once the game was ready. You know. It's a very weird world we're in. Right. Here we go. Race number two of... Are we into the... We're into episode 90 now, aren't we? Episode 92, I think. We've done so many of these videos on Forza Motorsport 3. It's unreal. It is officially my longest series, by the way. 92 episodes. This is going to be my longest series, and it's probably going to be my longest series for a while. Until Forza Motorsport 4 takes over. I don't think I'll have anything longer than Motorsport 4. But, I am predicting that WRC 10 might be the longest game when it comes to the WRC franchise. Because I am doing WRC. The, don't think I'm not. I fucking well am. <laughs> I think you're... Yo, Wolfie, what up? How are you today? Wolfie, you didn't DM me on Discord. Pop me a message on Discord. Um, I, I have something. I have a proposition for you. <laughs> I 
Boom, 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 boom. I'll probably reply to it after this race. <laughs> good to hear you're doing good. Good to hear you're doing good, man. Never really know if you care. You didn't hear a word that I said. Yes, I am the Kenneth guy. <laughs> My name is Kenneth. I still can't believe that nickname has stuck with me. Like, I have no intention of changing that from Kenneth, by the way. It's kind of a funny nickname. There's a funny story behind it. I think you're always in two minds. I appreciate it. I'll have a look um, and send you my proposition in a minute. Once I've finished. Do 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 Into your mind, into your mind. I need 4k more channel points for VIP. Let's go! Come on, Wolfie, you got this. What the fuck? Lead, follow. I, I didn't really get to see that, but it was like lead and follow, but it looked like... I don't know. <laughs> Leading is better than following. That's what that meant. Look at the trucks there. Is that like a business or something? Some of these advertising boards are actually kind of fucking stupid. <laughs> Or watching the stream faster. How are you watching it faster? Are you like rewinding and then playing it back in two times speed? <laughs> Double speed stream. I'm fast. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Groove. It makes me want to move. Must be the feeling it brings to you that makes you feel what you do. Every time I hear this groove, it makes me want to move. Must be the feeling it brings to you that makes you feel what you do. I'm that vibing frog emote thing. <laughs> so I kind of turned my family to Tidal and yeeted Spotify. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Wait, so have you got um, Tidal now then? What'd you do? Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Makes me want to go. Fair enough. 
fair enough. Must be the feeling. Ah, fuck. The only thing I have figured out, um, and it's not a problem with Tidal, it's a problem with my internet. Um, whenever I'm like uploading stuff uh, to YouTube, I can't be listening to Tidal at the same time because one or the other will stutter like a bitch. Um, and because Tidal obviously takes a lot of bandwidth, it's just like, ooh. All of the three rows of events are so long. What, on, um... What's it called? The one that I'm on at the moment. Like, each one of these... Six race championships... Each race takes about 12 minutes. Anywhere from 10 to 15. But the average is about 12 minutes. Um... And I'm having to do three races per episode. So, like, I'm getting two episodes out of a championship at the moment. And that's going to go for 30 championships. So that's 60 episodes. Over the next two months, pretty much. It's just this one section for YouTube. It's unreal. Make you feel what you do. You've got three left. Yeah, I'm just at the start of it. So I've got loads. But Wolfie, when you finished it, have you finished uh, Motorsport 1 and 2? I remember you saying you finished 1. I'm not sure if you finished 2. Fair enough. So you can then say you finished Motorsport 1, Motorsport 2, Motorsport 3. And then, good luck with Motorsport 4. That one's even fucking longer than this. <laughs> the only thing is, though, the... Um, with how Motorsport 4 does it, uh, Motorsport 4 is a little more exciting because the handling model is a little better. They've got like that motion blur. It feels a little more exciting in Motorsport 4. Uh, Motorsport 3, eh, I wouldn't say it's boring, but it doesn't have the same excitement factor of Motorsport 4 when it comes to doing events. So. Oh, uh, you know what I'm going to have to do once I finish this series? I'm going to have to do an outro video to the series. Oh yeah, five is pretty short, actually. Five could be done quite easily in about... I, I'm predicting... Um... Hang on, let me have a look. I need to have a look back at my spreadsheet. Uh, 41 championships. Each one takes approximately 15 to 17 races. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably be looking at... No more than 120 episodes. Uh, which is going to be shorter than... It's probably going to be sh like half the length of Motorsport 3. Maybe not. But. Yeah. The the only problem with that one is. Yeah. Motorsport 1 is the hardest. I feel like I want to. Uh, after I've done this. Um, that I want to give like. A solid opinion of every Forza game. Like, I'll probably record like a two hour video. It'll be something stupid. 
but like to finish off the mega series I might just do a review of every single Forza game like why not obviously I do it like the motorsport section and then the horizon section but I mean do you think that would be a good idea I, I would love to. I think it would be a good way to seal off my project, is to do like a full review of all of them. Like, I obviously had the knowledge that Motorsport 3 and Motorsport 4 were big games, don't get me wrong, I'm not that stupid. But, I don't think I realised just how much bigger they were. Because my plan was to finish this entire series in about two to two and a half years. I knew it would take more than two years to do, but my prediction was April, May 2024 to finish this series. My prediction has shifted so much to like April, May 2025 before I finish this. Like that's how much more I think it's going to take. Um, obviously on Twitch, it's not going to be full time like doing falls and stuff like three streams a week for now for the next two months but then after that i think i can go down to like two streams a week because i have so much extra content quite easily do that uh i don't i haven't played fm7 in a while haven't played multiple seven in quite some time actually i think it's been about a year and a half since I played it. But I do need to work out how to get that game installed on my PC. But I think by then I will have factory reset my PC and reinstalled Windows and all that shit. Because obviously the plan is not to keep the same PC for the next like 20, 30 years. I'm obviously going to get new ones. But this one, I believe, is going to... I'm... I might steal the graphics card out of it. Put the stock cooler back in. And run it as a streaming build. And get, like, a proper new one. Download it, Bozo. That's how you do it. <laughs> I should I should download it, but Oh you mean like on my PC? No, that's not how it works, unfortunately. Uh so my PC has this unfortunate bug that happens with a lot of Windows computers at the moment. Where the Windows store does not function. Um a lot of PCs just the Windows store doesn't function on Windows 10. Uh, I haven't heard many complaints about it on Windows 11, but I'm not planning on upgrading to Windows 11 just so I could download Motorsport 7. I don't think Motorsport 7 is worth the 5% performance hit that Windows 11 is giving people at the moment. So... Yeah, I'm waiting for Windows 11 to become more stable. Um, but apparently Windows 12 is already in the works, so... Which makes sense. Windows 11 was fine. Kind of shit. So. Windows 10 is fucking cracking. It, it does seem to be in pattern though. That every other Windows update is really good. And every other one is really shit. Like when you look. Windows XP. Amazing. Windows Vista. Shit. Windows 7. Amazing. Windows 8.1. Shit. Windows 10, amazing. Windows 11, shit. <laughs> so Windows 12 is going to be amazing. And newsflash, Windows 13 is going to be shit. <laughs> yeah, 12 is going to be a banger and 13 is going to be fucking shit. <laughs> and the award for the worst operating system goes to Windows 13. It's not out yet. But we've predicted it's going to be a stinker. <laughs> but yeah, Windows... 
just doesn't want to install stuff to my PC with the uh, Windows Store app. My fans are going really fast at the moment. But, um, yeah, it just doesn't want to install anything from the Windows Store, and it sucks. <laughs> Windows 12 is going to require a 4090. Do you know what, surprisingly, I'm surprised how... I obviously don't want a performance hit, but I am kind of impressed that Windows 11, something that's supposed to be so technologically advanced compared to the last one, has only taken 5% hit. But I'm still not willing to drop that 5% performance. Because, especially when it comes to me like gaming and streaming, I need as much performance as possible. So, I'm literally riding Windows 10 until either A... Um, Windows 11 becomes more stable for gaming and... Uh, what's it called? Streaming and stuff like that. So Windows 11 ha either has to become more stable or Windows 10 has to stop being updated to the point I literally cannot use it anymore. So. Well, to be honest, Windows 12 probably will be the same compatibility as 11. Because I don't see, unless they have like a new security chip that become gets invented, I don't know. Because you have to have a CPU with a certain chip. It's a T something. To run Windows 11. It's basically like a security thing. But you can buy one that you... You can buy the chip. That plugs into the motherboard. There's also like a actual like... It's almost like a USB stick kind of thing. It's like a security chip. Like a physical encryption or something. I'm not 100% sure. But it just keeps the computer secure or something, which I, I don't see how it does. Other than the fact if someone steals your PC, they just can't straight up use your shit. But again, that doesn't make sense. If your computer's been stolen, it's fucked anyways. I don't know. Just don't be an in idiot on the internet, then you're fine. I mean, the thing is, there are a lot of people who don't understand the internet. Like, antivirus software, right, is for two types of people in the world. Idiots on the internet who don't understand the internet and do dumb shit on the internet. That's one thing that antivirus is for. At which point the antivirus actually has to work. Because otherwise if it doesn't then antivirus companies get sued and shit. But the other group of people that antivirus is for are people that are terrified of the internet. Not even people who are stupid on the internet. They're just terrified that if they click on something they're going to get a virus. That's the two demographics that antivirus software is aimed for. And what's even worse, right, is a lot of the time, these are the same people that buy an iPhone, things that do not come with just straight up antivirus, they come with a, like, basic, like, stuff that web browsers have. It's not antivirus. That's just basic security. They come with that, but they don't actually come with antivirus. And antivirus doesn't really work on a mobile device. But these are the same people that will buy a mobile device and have absolutely no worries about it whatsoever. It is very strange. The antivirus companies get a really good job out of there. Like, they do a good job of selling it. They're like, oh yeah, by the way, you can have this offer for like three years of antivirus for only 50 pounds you don't need antivirus if you're late 
If you're not downloading like random ass files or like pirated shit off the internet, then you're fine. Literally. <laughs> or going to stupid websites. But obviously that's the kind of demographic that antivirus is aimed for. So my parents got me and my sister iPhone, so the extra security is bullshit. Yes. I hate to break it to you. I've iPhone and Apple itself, I I like Apple's operating system. I think it's fluid. But this promotional stuff about how iPhones and that are really secure. It's not that they're really secure, it's just that most of the stuff like that viruses are intended for just don't work on iPhones anyways. So yeah, if trying to use a drill on bulletproof glass is classed as security, then sure. It's obviously not gonna work. It's like, for example, imagine the iPhone. Um, what's it called? Imagine the iPhone is like a glass wall, right? And a... Wait, hang on. No. The iPhone is a bouncy castle, right? And it's, it's sole purpose is to, like, be that, to exist, right? And you have this virus. It's a brick, right? You throw a brick at a bouncy castle, half the time it's going to bounce off, right? Because this virus is pretty much built for a computer. You use that on a, on a fucking glass window. That glass window is a computer. Obviously, it's going to fucking destroy it. Like, iPhones, it just... Most viruses don't work on an iPhone. Or an Android phone. Though Android is a little more, because it's a lot easier to actually make a virus for an Android phone. Um, only because a lot of the stuff to make software for iPhone is a lot more comparable to sort of open source software. Alex, don't be singing Christmas songs in my chat, you prick. It's not even December. You are literally a criminal right now in my eyes. If I was to pick two people to get rid of off of the planet of this earth, a murderer and you for singing Christmas too early, you're going. It's fucking... It's not even December. Don't start with this shit. <laughs> don't... Don't start with this shit. <laughs> it's too early. Fuck you! Oh shit. My microphone wobbled <laughs> a little bit. All right, we're done. I don't have to drive the Fiat 500 anymore. Fuck you, 500. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.